Happy New Year, Renegade Nation! Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Betas Bandicoot, Bash Fetchum, Crystal Gomez, Chris, Oliver Odegaard, James Butterworth, Amar Shika, Rogelio Gomez, Sean Delaney, Jessica Bogus, Dan Robin, Liam, Farron Chowdhury, Harris, Biggest Dickus, Monty Python fan I see, Trentix, Jawad Krebs, Ju Chin, Good Christian Boy, Lindsay Johnson, Jordan Kirk, Hanolex, Banana Peel, Devon, Fathalo, Lit, Thomas Mollett, Elite Leaks, and Moisty Justice. And I would also like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, and Bevan Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, click the join button right down beside the subscribe button down below. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Hmm. Wait too long. Get her <laughs> 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 I didn't know you could do that. Damn it. Got owned by a guy named Duke. <laughs> This dude, this dude right here, is this Colonel Sanders? Yes. Gentlemen, I actually did something yesterday or the other day. Whenever Queen came over, it wasn't yesterday. It was, it was a, uh, was it? Yeah, it was yesterday. It was Friday, because I remembered. We had a lot, I had a lot going on that day because I was I recorded with Quinn. I was going to record with Chad that evening, but then. All of a sudden, Chad was just like, oh, I actually can't because me and Nikki are going to do some stuff. And then I went over and I loaded up the uh, washer the to washer go to your house. Curtain. Oh, by the way, uh, did you get it installed? The, the washer? Yeah. Yeah, no, I've been busy all day. Today, okay, so okay. Time for <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, all the hookups are there and everything, yeah, yeah, so you shouldn't have any issues. Done, uh, probably Monday because we're going to be going all day tomorrow. Oh, Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He, he found that apartment not too far from here. That's cool. But um, I did something the other day. Uh, at first, I questioned it. And then I was like, you know what? I haven't tried it before. Might as well give it a shot now. I tried uh, the McRib from uh, McDonald's. Uh, this, wait a minute, you never tried McRib? Never. Never had what one, dude. Hell? I never had one. I have mixed feelings about the McRib. First, and, the first one I ever tried uh -huh. stole my soul. I was like, oh, this is so good. The second one, it wasn't quite the same. It never is. It's never consistent. You're, you're always, it, it's, it's, like, it's like chasing the dragon. You're sometimes always chasing that high. Great, and sometimes it's just like, I don't even eat the whole thing. Like, oh, yeah. Man, this, this I, I tried it, and here's what I'll say. It was all right. It wasn't the worst thing. Um, the, the whole thing with, uh, the whole thing with, you know, it being, you know, ribs, you know, like, "Quote unquote ribs from McDonald's. Um, it's not really ribs. It's actually like made to look like ribs. Yeah, yeah. It's I think, uh, it's made by Play Doh. I think. <laughs> I don't know about that now. <laughs> you know, but, but it but may very well be. You can, but you heat up no. some Play Doh and cover but it with Salisbury me, steak sauce. That's needless, what my sister said about my cheese <laughs> omelet I made the other day. <laughs> needless to say, I'm not going to be trying it again though. I don't think so it I tasted a lot better than Play Doh though. What is the actual Play Doh? No, it's a cheese omelet. That's a cheese, cheese omelet. omelet? Oh, yeah. omelette du fromage. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, omelette du fromage. Which I there's actually a... made it from our previous reaction oh, to really? the from omelette du fromage Bobbish video with his uh, instructions. So. Yeah, nice. Oh, I love At that. least what I could remember of his instructions. Well, and my new pan that I got for Christmas is bitching for making omelets. Like, <laughs> nothing sticks <laughs> to that motherfucker. Dude, you have it's, used it's that nice. thing so much since Christmas. Yeah, I've already used it six times. Jesus, yeah. man. Nice. And it still looks brand new. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you, if you it's cook good. it, if you use it right, you don't like, wash scratch my other the stuff shit out of it with I, like a metal utensil. I got here. that with yeah. a set of like four or five other different like cookware, like, and I got an, I need and to wash the uh, rest of them and get them ready to use like and no. make some stuff with. Them. Yeah, I just lightly scrub it with a non-metal brush, and that's it. No. Yeah. yeah, I just basically like wash it with the sprayer and stuff and some soap and. Rub the soap in any places that need extra care, you know. Yeah, I've I've had to. Yeah, here recently, I've had to like 
Um, we're talking I, about omelet makers. Yeah. Well, omelet makers, but also uh, here recently, I've, uh, I've I'm actually going to be making some fried chicken for my dad tomorrow. He has been begging me for like the last two three months for me to come over to because my dad, where he doesn't work right now, because uh, you know, well, his, first off, uh, he got sick and uh, it wasn't wasn't COVID related or anything like that. But he got sick and he had to uh, take time off. From him taking time off. Uh, they actually found several things wrong with him. You know, his knee, his shoulder. Then he had the, those hernias that he had to t- have taken care of. They did the surgery on those, and then everything was good. And now here recently, he's been cleaning up his diet. He's been eating better, and he's been doing a lot better. And I've been telling him and telling him about my fried chicken so long, and uh, he's just like, you know what, son? I got a free day on Sunday. How about you come up and uh, you make me some of that fried chicken, and uh, and whenever uh, whenever Kim and the girls get back, I'll give chance, them some too. You ever have a chance to meet Nate? Um, have him make some fried chicken. Oh, I'm oh I I've I've been perfecting this fried chicken recipe for God knows how long, and they I, I think I think most people I've made it for can attest to it. It's actually pretty good. Uh, I've I mean I I may do my own personal recipe on if y'all want to see my own personal fried chicken recipe i mean feel free to hit me up on that i don't mind making a video about it um and also nick can show you how to make the uh fried chicken uh what were they the fried chicken uh quesadillas or yeah, the uh, renegade just a sandwich wrap i can show you how to make it into a nice yeah. sandwich wrap if you like to eat it that way. yeah but uh also if you guys want to know how to make gordon ramsay's scrambled eggs i can do that for you <laughs> yeah he's gotten good at that uh, I have that down pretty much to a science dude, at this point. I can make a mean bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you what. Perfect, perfect, bowl, perfect level of milk. Yeah. yeah. You get a popcorn bowl, and then <laughs> yes, the yeah, fucking bit. popcorn bowl. Next <laughs> thing so you know, you're like Craig from friggin' Friday. Just pour the whole thing in. <laughs> get like one of those big old dessert <laughs> spoons. Just all. Oh. Just fucking eat it with a ladle. <laughs> pretty much. Damn right. So, Binging with Babish uh, last year did uh, The Rib Witch, which is from The Simpsons. For those of you who remember The Simpsons, you know, very famous, you know, critique of American pop culture. And co- Please don't throw things at me, but I've never really watched very much Simpsons. That's fine. That's I've fine. been thinking about recently actually giving it a shot. Well, it's on Disney it Plus now, uh, so oh, it you is. can give it a watch. I will tell you, if you go back to the 80s and you watch the first season of Simpsons... You're probably not gonna like it. No, the first the it first is season is rough. So dry. The oh, first season's oh very rough. the The second season through season ten, I would say, is like their best work yes. because season two, actually, I found this out. Brad Bird, the mm-hmm. guy who did The Incredibles, Ratatouille, uh, and and all that, he actually was the like lead series director from like 1990 until like 1999. Mm-hmm. The, so that's that's also a, a that's like their peak era. Videos they said the '90s versions of The Simpsons are the best. Yes, um, I I'd say season two through season ten are their best seasons. Yeah. So, so I, would, I would just like literally skip the first season. Yeah, start so. with season two. <laughs> start start season two. And if you ever want to go back and just look at it and watch it, you can. But you're gonna be bored. Like nothing, it, nothing hardly happens in any episode. This is it's true. Just little, uh, it's basically, hey and, guys, we learned how to make a cartoon. And their and their Halloween specials uh, during those se- during those seasons was the best too. Like I, I still, I the I shinning, have, I still laugh my I, ass uh, off at. There's still like handfuls of episodes in between shit I've missed on. I, I didn't get to watch it 100 percent consistently growing up. It's kind of like Family Guy. We just kind of caught it whenever. Yeah. You know, but um. It is what it Futurama is. Futurama is one of the only shows like related to it that I watch most of. Yeah, that's a fair. Lot of a lot of people who like Futurama didn't like The Simpsons, and a lot of people who like The Simpsons didn't like Futurama. Subject, same with South Park and Family yeah. God. And See, and I, I don't know. Like, I'm just kind of thinking like I didn't like King of the Hill as a kid. But as an adult, I fucking love King of the Hill. Well, yeah. Like, so I'm just it's because you can get it I didn't it like The Simpsons as a kid, and I want to go back and see if maybe I like it more as an adult. But I do like Futurama like a lot, so if that ends up being the case where... Well, but but you, know, you see, that's not but you see that's not everybody. Other. Yeah, well, that, I'm just we'll, saying. Like, we'll see what happens. Well, but it's where both shows are made by Matt Groening. I that's mean, why that's, I want to give it a shot and see what happens. Yeah. Well, we got this Babbage video queued up here. Let's give it a watch. Let's see what happens. Here we go. One rib witch, please. <laughs> Now without lettuce. I love the fact that this that this it was that like scene right that scene right there is a parody of uh fucking um 
what's the name of that fucking movie? Um, they uh, Super Size Me. No, 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 no. That it's was... a pa- no. It's a parody of um. Uh, Requiem for a Dream. Oh, oh, oh I've right, seen that movie. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't get the. Didn't it's get the where it's right. where they keep drop popping oh, the pills yeah, yeah. and their pupils dilate gotcha. and then their blood gotcha. flow goes up. I ain't seen it in years. So. Yeah, it looks but, like his arteries clogging with each one of these. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the curious case of the rib witch. A rib sandwich whose contents do not include ribs. So right off the bat, we are breaking the rules by making a dry rub for our ribs. We're starting with about a cup of dark brown sugar, a tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of dry mustard, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a teaspoon of smoked Spanish paprika, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a good shake of normal paprika, because why not? Then, just like any dry rub, we gotta season with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, about two teaspoons each worth tiny whisk together to the best of your ability and be sure to taste for seasoning remember if your dry rub doesn't taste good you won't taste good oops sorry you had to see that now we're on to the wet <laughs> rub i guess you'd call it a heady mixture of about four parts yellow mustard to one part ketchup and maybe like one part liquid smoke i know all the barbecue aficionados are shaking their heads at me but we're trying to solve the riddle for oven ribs that we're just going to make into a sandwich anyway save your energy for summer speaking of ribs the first thing we have to do with our ribs is rip off the papery yeah membrane. On the back of the, the inner membrane, membrane. I always, make yeah. it very easy to grip your membrane, which sounds like a dirty saying, but it's not. Then we're brushing down every surface with our membrane. I always thought membrane was a funny word. Mixture, yeah. And then using that as a kind of glue for a dry rub. We're starting with the bottoms of our ribs and then repeating on the top. At this point, your house should smell thoroughly like barbecue. Hell yeah. I would check your spices' expiration dates. Anyway, we're stacking these ribs high and then wrapping them in the strategically placed plastic wrap that we put on the table. And then we are refrigerating for at least eight hours and up to 24. An entire day later, and we're going to unwrap our ribs and place them onto a rimmed baking sheet, and then we're going to put that in the freezer, because we're going to place them in a very hot oven. This method comes courtesy of America's Test Kitchen. The key step of which is to smoke the ribs using Lapsang tea, which is very clever because it has its own inherent smokiness, so we're going to spread out six bags worth of Lapsang tea on our other rimmed So that's like a poor man's smoker. And then we're going to make a big old aluminum foil top by merging two sheets together at the scene like so do not want any smoke getting out Speaking okay of which here come our ribs after their 45 minute stint in the freezer during which time our oven has also been preheating to 500 degrees fahrenheit with a pizza stone inside to make sure that all that heat is getting transferred up into the tea once our parcel is tightly packaged we're placing in the 500 degree oven for that's another thing we need here is a pizza stone moving lowering yeah that would help a lot fahrenheit and pouring a beer into the corner oh. of the sheet. This is going to steam wait 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 Wait, wait, I need to see. I need to see something. Kind of beer it was? Yeah, I need to see. It was, it was oh, shit. Uh, wait, okay. It was a Miller. Hmm? I thought I'd fucked up there. Sorry. Okay. Of our baking sheet. It was a Modelo. Okay. It's going to steam the ribs and help them become very, very tender over the next hour and a half that they're going to spend in this 250 degree Fahrenheit oven. Now, during the last 30 minutes of cooking, we're going to make a quick and simple barbecue sauce, starting with half a grated onion and three cloves of crushed garlic. These are the aromatics that we're going to saute in a small saucepan, along with a little squirt of vegetable oil over medium heat for about two or three minutes until everybody gets soft and smelly in a good way. Then we're adding about a tablespoon's worth of chili powder, letting that toast for another 30 seconds or so, and then adding a cup of ketchup, along Ooh. with two to three tablespoons of blackstrap molasses, for both sweetness and color, two okay. tablespoons of Dijon mustard, about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I know for you, you probably like, put in the... Sp- I like mustard-based barbecue sauce. Well, I know you'd put in, like, the spicy brown mustard if you could. Oh, yeah, probably. Pepper, about two Dijon's teaspoons okay, of apple cider brown vinegar, superior. two teaspoons of smoked paprika, and that's just about it. Then we're going to tiny whisk all these guys together, cover, and you got a tiny for whisk in that too. Mm-hmm. Then we're just going to keep this guy yeah, warm thanks to until Oxy. the ribs are ready, yeah. which they are. For this application, what we're looking for is for the bone to be able to twist with little resistance, even though it's still attached to the meat. But we still got one step left here, and that is the second coat of paint, starting with the underside of the ribs. Oh. We're going to generously coat them with our freshly made barbecue sauce, and then throw them under the broiler for five to seven minutes until browned and crisp. We're then going to turn these meat side upward and repeat, lovingly slathering with barbecue 
barbecue sauce and placing it under the broiler for five to seven minutes until Damn. browned and crisp. You can keep repeating this if you like, but I'm going to stop here because, dare I say, it's sandwich time. My plan was to just pull the bones out and make sort of boneless rib patties, but these ribs weren't quite meaty enough and they ended up falling apart. But I think that's going to make for a damn fine sandwich. The rib which might not have lettuce on it, but if it's modeled after the McRib, that means thinly sliced white onion and dill pickles. All atop a squishy, pillowy submarine roll. Let's arrange some nice boneless ribs on top, give it a nice second coat with barbecue sauce, and then lovingly arrange some onions and pickles over top. It was at this point that I realized I'm not making the food of the show, I'm making a tribute to the food from the show, and sometimes that's okay. In this instance, I wanted to recreate the... Grilled onions, that's the... Yeah, a lot of people would prefer that. I just prefer to keep the onions off because I do not like onions. Yeah, I'm not they they make either. my friggin' stomach turn. I, I still eat them from time to time. Like, I don't know, know if I'm allergic either, to them or not. Yeah, come on. Rib which. And I gotta say, good, in that spirit, I, this yeah. is pretty I'd close approximation. It. it was also an opportunity to take a look at oven ribs, a challenge faced by anyone who gave up mowing their lawn in favor of living in an apartment. And there's definitely some great technique to take away here. Enough to get half the sandwich in the clean half sandwich club. Hang on, I gotta take this half in the other room for analysis. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much in the clean plate club. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good sandwich, apparently. That's pretty cool, a little quick, to the point cooking show. Yeah, well, yeah, Babish doesn't mess around. Yeah, he, I agree on the onions. When I'm putting onions on a sandwich, I would prefer something to be done to them, either caramelized or grilled, yeah. you know, just not raw onions. Yeah, a lot of people would prefer that. Me, I would just keep the onions off, and I don't like pickles that much. Instead, I'd probably, I don't know if, uh, I don't know what I'd put on there with it. For me, I already know it would be jalapenos and oh, you kill green it. peppers, both sautéed on there with cheese. Ooh. I was going to say, what kind of cheese would you use, mozzarella or pepper jack? Mozzarella. Nice. Barbecue is one of the few things that I don't really do cheese with. Well, it, it depends so on the cheese. I've never really tried it, though. It's it the, it depends on the like cheese, it. because American cheese, like fuck no, dude. American, American, American cheese fucks up barbecue worse than anything. Dude, I don't like American cheese on... Anything really. I, like, even I like it on certain things. I like it on certain burgers, but that's it. Like yeah, mozzarella, it is, though, it dude. Is pretty good oh, on cheese like shredded mozzarella, a little shredded mm -hmm. mozzarella on top of it. Let it melt on top of it, and then throw the throw the bun on top, dude. Also, put also a pate of that spicy brown mustard on the top on the top bun just for you, Nick. Mm -hmm. and then pate just pate on the top bun. Yeah, just a little pate of it. Where yeah, oh just my. like. Or I just let him slather it on there and kill it. However, yeah, however he wants. Because every time I make pigs, he's always just like he always comes down. And he's like spicy brown mustard, just just kills it with the. I don't kill it. No, no, I I, I joke. I, do, I just I, do a, I love a zigzag spicy. drizzle across the top of. The he's he's artsy. Mustard is yeah. awesome. Like spicy honey Dijon mustard. Oh my god. Ooh. Yeah, I can lather up my chicken in that all day. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to try out. Like making our own barbecue sauce and seeing what kind of like confectionery uh, shit we can come up with. Like whenever summer rolls around and we're able to like hang out with each other more I'm and doing more. A hot wing episode. Oh, dude! I've got a collection. We got the grill out there, you know, man. I was gonna say I don't know if you saw, but we have a bitchin' grill out back now. Oh, do you? Yeah, I've, we got I've we got the Blackstone. I've we, been back there in like a, a long time. Yeah, since the only thing is, is I worry about that deck eventually collapsing one day that's yeah, that's you the, see the one at our house that damn thing's falling apart the deck uh, was not taken care of before we got this house no that's one thing about this it, house it honestly kind of needs to be rebuilt like at this point and if anything if anything i'm going to replace like the top layer of wood because i think the bottom layer is still good because it's pressure treated but the top layer just has not been maintained and taken yeah, care of like it's not been properly sealed and shit so no the weather has gotten to it for sure yeah, Which all, sucks. All your, yeah. all your deck wood should be pressure treated. Um, You'd think that, yeah, but... I mean, you can get a thin piece of pr uh, pressure treated piece, like, you know, just a, a 2 by 6 for yeah. each one. And I'm, two by eight, but two by six, I'm probably going to section the yeah. section it off and, like, do section to section. Try to seal it with the paint and everything, but eventually that, that seal gets deteriorated by the sun. Yeah. The sun will eat through fucking mm -hmm. poly polyurethane and, like... Um, not even few one, years. one year of exposure. Oh, really? The just damn thing will eat through it. Who? Yeah, then they try to cover it up with just paints and sealant and stuff like that, but the, there's no sealant for the sun. Yeah. It's yeah. going to burn up. Which, which, That's why my dad just gets the deck at 
his house resealed like every like year. Yeah, like, basically. but if you build it with pressure treated for the first time, you'll never have to do that because it's well pressure treated. Effectively, through. that's probably what I'm gonna do. Like once yeah. I get that, yeah, one, I mean, like, it is more expensive. Well, oh yeah, but yeah, but if it you're but not if it save helps, money in the long run from not having well, to do that. I'm probably oh, gonna like, rebuild the like, back deck. Am I gonna die while I try to grill? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want that now. So but I, I, I probably will and end up down here where I t- well, where I take smoke breaks while we record I, videos. I'll either do that or I'll hire I'll hire like a fa- I, there's a family member I have who does contracting work right. for like outdoor stuff. I'll see what they say. And if they can make me a good deal, I'll see if I can't work out a deal it's with them. Could end up like I'm grilling one day, and like Chad's out on the back porch down here, like smoking, and I just fall through the deck. It's like, hey, Chad, hey, like, Nick, like that, that hurt. Nerf this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you and Nerf this. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, pan down, he's just on the ground dead. Uh, all right, well. That's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Rib Witch yeah, from The Simpsons. the least painful fall from a balcony I've ever taken. Oh, yeah, it's man. impressive. You took it like a champ. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he does all of his own stunts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this was Binging with Babbage. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And I'm Jacob. We'll see you then, everyone. Peace out.